Hi, my name is David Hester and I've been a member of the studio for quite a while. I think since its beginning, actually. You may have seen a couple of my posts made over the years regarding things that interest me and what actually interests me are the earliest Pibrach manuscripts and scores that we have. There are a number of reasons why they're interesting. I think first and foremost because they seem so foreign when you look at them, not just in terms of how difficult it is to read handwritten scores, but in terms of the styles that they reflect compared with the styles that we play today. Additionally, they interest me because when you compare the manuscripts side by side, if you pick a tune and you compare how Angus Mackay or Donald MacDonald or MacArthur McGregor play these tunes, um, they each record something different in the transcriptions. And that suggests a broader palette of interpretive options than what we typically hear today. So that's been my interest, and as a result of that interest, growing out of it, has been the Alt Pibrock Club. I may have mentioned it to you. And the Alt Pibrock Club is a group of about 250 of us. Um, many contributors include, well, primarily Alan McDonald on occasion, and Barnaby Brown a great deal, the great scholar Keith, and archivist Keith Sanger. We are anticipating hearing from Peter Cook, Hugh Cheap, and his work has, um, they have been incorporated into what we do. Um, Ian McKinnis as well, and the late Roderick Cannon. All of us are interested in exploring and learning more about the ancient Gaelic roots and song root foundations of Pibrochs and coming to understand that culture prior to the um, loss at the Battle of Culloden and the loss of the culture itself that sustained Pibroch. One of the things that has developed over the course of the years while we've published, made available these manuscripts, offered some posts and insights of our own, is that a number of people feel a little bit intimidated about approaching these materials. Um, as I mentioned, they seem a little foreign, and foreign in a number of ways. And I've thought about that a great deal, and what I've learned from my tutors, Alan McDonald and Barnaby being primary, but also Yori a bit, and um, sometimes from Jack Lee, and from uh, Willie McCallum and Donald Lindsay, um, learning from them how they approach Pibroch and what I can do to make the adoption of these scores a little bit easier, a little less intimidating. And so I've thought about it for a bit and I've come up with a set of five rules. Five rules that I find that I have applied over time. There might be a sixth rule lurking, but five of them that I apply that help me get back to the music behind the scores. And there's a great deal of discussion that can happen regarding how accurate the scores could possibly have transcribed what they heard. But the fact of the matter is, the people who were transcribing were consummate musicians. They understood the vocabulary of classical music notation. They understood Cantorak. Campbell even developed his own notation system, scientific notational system, in an effort to capture what they heard being played. I take these people and their efforts quite seriously, and as a result of that, have come to the conclusion that we can learn things from them about Pibroch, learn things from them about the fluidity, the variability, the improvisational quality, and the true musicianship that a Pibroch master brought to these performances. We also learn a little bit about their social and historical contexts, the occasions in which Pibroch was expected to be played, and what the audience was hoping to hear. There is a lot of material there that um, is, is available to us and can be overwhelming. But these five rules 
help me distill my approach down to something that's memorable, something that's repeatable, something that gets us back to the music behind the score and lets us as musicians then appreciate what and understand what that music is before it hit notational systems and then for ourselves gets onto our pipes. The idea of these rules is that my observation has been few people can actually get back to the Gaelic songs that lurk behind the tunes. We know many of these were songs translated onto the pipes. We know this from a variety of sources that Alan MacDonald has discussed, for example, but we also know it because quite interestingly, when you played Pibach on the pipes, you were told to sing the Pibach. Sing the Pibach on the pipes. You weren't told to play the tune on the pipes. You were to sing the song on the pipes. Very suggestive, that. And very few people, when they're asked to recall for you in their kind of form of own personal kantorak, what the song sounds like that they play, they have a hard time both repeating back to you in the, their kantorak what they've played, but more importantly, a hard time apparently understanding what the melodic core of the song is before it comes to the pipes. And that's what I'm interested in doing, recovering a theoretical, sometimes actual, melodic core and using that as the basis for my interpretation when I bring it to the pipes and allow the instrument to contribute to the song and create a new tune from it. So, in the next video, I will share with you what these five rules are. For now, what I wanted to tell you is that I will be talking about these rules. I'll be giving you some ideas about what I mean by the song behind the scores. And I will be embarking upon a project that I call an Urlar a day. That's going to be extremely difficult, and I'm not sure if I can pull it off every day, but my intention is to work my way through the entire corpus of primary source materials by analyzing through my rules each score as it comes before me and putting them on the practice chanter and seeing what the result is. It's not intended to be definitive. It's not intended to be standard. It's not intended to be authoritative. It's intended to spark an excitement and interest in what you as a musician can extract from the notes on the score and bring with your abilities and with your interpretive insights, bring to the performance. So that's what's going to take place over the next year. And I look forward to seeing you at the next installment of this. Bye-bye.